this, open this up. Okay. I'm waiting for people to people to join, I guess. I was hoping to talk about the the 2020 Game of the Year awards, which has some, you know, very questionable things. I don't even need to mention, like, why people are upset, but you know, I will anyway. It's uh. It's mainly because of the, uh, what's it called? Yeah, the, you know, with Last of Us 2 winning about six or seven whatever awards. And eventually that, you know, that meant that it would become Game of the Year since it won the most awards out of all the other games. And in my personal opinion, I'm I'm glad it won, but at the same time, like it is kind of bullshit for how it won and the fact that it won. Like as much as I love that game, like and the critics, you know, they praise it, and you know, they've it's like the most sold game of. 2020 or whatever but the fans or the majority of them just hate it <laughs> like and I understand why but <sighs> sorry those uh but no it was uh a lot of the fans just thought it was like they thought it was terrible or they thought the story was terrible. Like, they didn't like where it was going. A lot of people hate Abby. And a lot of people just... Some people thought it was too long. Some people thought that... That they didn't, they didn't like how Joel died or how quickly he was killed off or whatever. Which is understandable. A lot of these things I understand. But some of them I don't really. Agree with. And then there's also like. The uh, the rewards. It got like. Best creative director. Or whatever. Best action adventure. Best. Uh, innovation. Or innovation something. Which some of them are, you know, good, but I wouldn't say, I mean, the best creative director one is very questionable. Like, I love that game, and, you know, Neil Druckmann is the director of that game, but, you know, I never heard, like, anything else from them. I've only seen the, uh, what's it called? I've only heard of him from Last of Us 2. I don't know what else he's done. But, I don't know if I'd consider him, like, the best creative director. There's also, uh, what's it called? The best, like, action adventure or whatever. It was considered that, which, I mean, action adventure is like a specific um, thing, a specific type title or whatever. Like, I mean, it is like adventure, like they're going, you know, Ellie and uh, Abby, you know, going all over Seattle 
And it, there is a lot of action in it. But... I mean, I guess it is an action game, action adventure game. It's also a very story. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's also a very story driven game. Which is, uh, I think, a better title for it. And. Although that would be too, like, simple. Because. I mean, pretty much almost all video games have a story in it, so calling it a story-driven game would just be undermining it, I guess. So, yeah. There was also, uh, as there was like, uh, there were a bunch of, there were some other choices, like, and by the way, these were all good picks for 2020. Like, obviously, Last of Us 2, I agree with the most, even though most people wouldn't. But there were also some other great picks, like uh, like Doom Eternal, that was amazing. Ghost of Tsushima was a phenomenal game. Uh, what else? Final Fantasy VII was great. Uh, what else? What else? The Hades... Hades was super cool. Um, there's also Animal Crossing, which isn't for me, but like it's definitely a heavy hitter in terms of uh, quality and who it's made by and all that. But I could understand why it's up there. Is there another one? Uh, I don't. I don't know. Hold on. I was. I think I said them all right. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, all those, all those games, like, great. They were all great, and I would be happy with any of them winning. But I am happy that Last of Us Two made it. Instead of the rest, I think that one is, like, better than the rest by just a little bit, you know? In my personal opinion, I would say that Last of Us 2 is my second favorite game. Just above the first Last of Us. And just under Dishonored being my favorite game. Uh, I know, a very, very, contra very controversial choice, but I don't care. <laughs> I thought it was, I thought it was great. Obviously, there was, there's problems with Last of Us 2, obviously. I mean, just like any game ever, any, there's, nothing's perfect, so obviously there's going to be a problem with it. With Last of Us 2, there were some that were, you know, that I wish, you know, could have done better. But overall, it was just, it was fantastic, in my opinion. Uh, before I talk about Last of Us 2, I guess, um, with, uh, I'll say a little bit about the other games too. Uh, Doom Eternal, which is, uh, I think that's like the first game I bought in 2020, maybe. But it was, uh, man, <laughs> I, I played the shit out of that game. That game is awesome. Like, I played the first one. Like, this, this one is everything about that game just better everything like it was more difficult it was there were cooler enemies there was that super um uh, there was that crazy um what was it the marauder i forgot his name but he was he was awesome 
it was super difficult. Like, <laughs> I, I mean, I put up with it because the gameplay was super awesome. But it was still, like, it was fucking difficult. Um, yeah, I think, I hope they make a Doom 3. And I hope it ends up better than the original Doom 3, but, I mean, I'm sure it will be. Like, they're on a hot streak right now. Uh, and then there's, uh, Final Fantasy 7, which, I mean, come on, it's, uh, it is different from the first game a bit, and there the ending is like a lot of people said the ending is kind of weird, which I kind of agree. But like regardless, it's still fantastic. the The gameplay is great. The graphics are great. It's a great retelling. Dreams. It's pretty much a dream come true. I was never like the hugest Final Fantasy fan. I never had a problem with it, I just didn't like grow up with it. But you know, I do enjoy that game. It's super cool. Uh I don't I don't have it, just so you know, I'm being honest, like I've but I I have like tried it out before. And from what I saw it was super dope. And what's up Elias? I'm uh I'm just talking about games and I'm <laughs> I'm talking about the uh the the game of the year. Obviously there's a lot a lot to talk about. Especially with uh you know what. I was uh I was just talking about the uh, what's it called? Final Fantasy and I was just about to talk about the uh, Hades or or whatever, but yeah, the Final Fantasy VII was great. But Hades, I thought, like, yeah, the I mean, it's nothing too different or special or whatever. I mean, it is special, but like, you know, it was definitely deserving of it. It was by far, like, some of the coolest animations I've ever seen. The, uh, and the character designs were super cool. I mean, I didn't, I didn't play it. I'm only, I've only watched people play it, but, and they say that you can't, like, really judge something if you haven't played it. I don't, I don't think that's true, but you'll definitely get a better insight on it if you play it. However, you can still get a pretty good idea if you if you watch someone play it. Uh Yeah, it was it was um but yeah, it was it's great from what I from what I saw it was it looks really cool. And I'm glad it won. I think Hades won like two or three awards, which is really good. Very deserving. Um, what else? Uh, Animal Crossing, you know. We all know why people like it. It's super, uh, it can be considered super addictive. Uh, it's easy to look at. I think there's, a, there's quite a bit, like, to offer. Or it has it has quite a bit to offer in terms of just uh I don't know just hours like like I said it it could be very addicting to get into that game and just do whatever and collect bells and all that but yeah I think I think it definitely deserved that and then uh, Ghost of Tsushima that game is fucking sick. It was it reminded me a lot of Sekiro. Uh Shadows Die Twice. The one the, which is a uh, which is the game that won game of the year last year. 
I thought that game I thought that game Sekiro was awesome like the graphics were beautiful the gameplay is like everything you want from a, a Dark Souls-esque game just slightly more difficult and like and there's jumping <laughs> which is you know I thought I thought Sekiro was you know it did a great job showing like uh, I thought the content I mean not the what's it called I like that it didn't take itself too like seriously I mean not seriously like realistic like I was fine with it being slightly like unrealistic and like there were giant people like that were like 20 feet tall or whatever there's awesome dragons and shit and and yeah it was, it was super cool and that game definitely deserved the year the game of the year of 2019 and but yeah anyway I was I was uh, Ghost of Tsushima it yeah like I said it reminds me a lot of that game not as difficult but in my opinion definitely way better in story wise like the the cutscenes and and the world building I thought was beautiful. It was like super epic, you know. Like and the like, it gives you everything you'd expect and more. It gives you a great. It gives you a, uh, an asshole villain that you just want to. You want him to die. You want to murder him brutally. And you give this this cool hero who gets super cool throughout the game, upgrades his armor and weapons and fighting styles and everything. And yeah, it was it was just amazing. I would, like I said, I would be I would be happy with whatever game with whichever of those games they were gonna give game of the the year to, I would have been happy with any of those. And Ghost of Tsushima might be the second or third. Like, yeah, it's it was it's close. Um, what else is there? Uh, and then you know, Last of Us. Uh, honestly, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if Last of Us was gonna make. Uh, was gonna get Game of the Year. Because, like I said before, the, uh, excuse me, like I said, the, uh, what's it called? I mean, it was critically praised. It sold the most in America or whatever in 2020. And, you know, despite everything that's been going on with you know how the fans or a lot of fans hate it and you know all the leaks of Joel dying and everything like despite all of that it's some it still somehow got game of the year along with six other awards or about six I uh, I was a little surprised I mean I mean, it was, it's what I was hoping for, and I was very unsure, because, like, it was such a heavy hitter of a title, despite all the hate it was getting, and it, you know, despite that, there were two great, there was a great chance it would get it, and there was a great chance it wouldn't get it, it is, but I'm, I'm glad it did, personally, because that game is, in my opinion, in my opinion, the best game of 2020 it was it was sick. I mean, 
if you ask me, like, uh, I thought, obviously there, there are things to praise it for, like, if you had to ask me, it's probably the best looking game ever so far. Like, I've never seen a video game look that good and realistic at the same time. And obviously there's, you know, preferences like, oh, just because it looks realistic doesn't mean it's the best looking, which is true. But, for, you know, for me, personally, I thought that's what made it super, like, because obviously anime and stuff, cartoons and all that like you can like sometimes they're so you know weird and just crazy and you know unorthodox but at the same time they can be super beautiful at the same time but when you take something that looks super like when you make something that looks super realistic and you make it like like with that game they were they spent apparently years on it and they were being uh a lot of the the creators and the directors and all that were you know and the game designers like all of them were like working super hard on it like the apparently the process of making it was super difficult and a lot of people thought that you know it didn't end up they didn't like the game because of the way the people were being treated or whatever honest and honestly they you know because of that like they do deserve in a way, they do deserve the game of the year because of the work they put in. And I'm glad they enjoyed the game they created as well. The, um, you know, like they said, they, the, they even said themselves, like, it was really difficult to create, but they were, they were very pleased with the outcome of the game. It's just a shame the fans don't, or most of the fans don't agree, because, you know, I think it's a great game. And it, you know, because of how great it is and because of the process in making it, I think it definitely deserves Game of the Year. And I hope to God they make a Last of Us 3. I mean, they, they probably will. I mean, it's, it's Naughty Dog. They, they, uh... It's the most sold game of the year, I think, so far. Uh, yeah, they they should definitely be able to. And but yeah, the I thought it was a great game. Like I said, the the graphics were, you know, they were going for a very realistic look, of course. And they definitely pulled that off. Like, there are some parts that looked actually real. Which is, you know, crazy. Because, like, you know, when you... When I was... Watch, when I was... Some of the scenes in that game, for, like, from a distance, you can... You may think, oh, that's that's real. That's a movie or something. But No. And and we still have room for improvement, which is crazy. I just hope that people still, you know, I hope that we still, you know, decide to make more games and everything. I hope video games don't ever stop being created because, <laughs> you know, I wonder what life would be like without video games obviously we I mean I was we'd find another form of entertainment or whatever I mean but anyway anyway uh the uh 
also with Last of Us 2, the the gameplay is obviously it's very similar to the first one, but it's you know, a few things like here and there switched up, but and some people say it's not that impressive. But I think it is. Personally, like a lot of the animations, like with some of the the kills, like I think that the uh, I think some of the the executions are some of them look like cutscenes. That's how that's how good the game looks. Like at times, it seemed like you were getting into a cutscene for grabbing this person, but then it ended up just being a slightly drawn out execution, which is super cool in my opinion. Like with uh, the first time I stealth killed one of those big people with the the pickaxes, first time I stealth killed them, like I thought it was, I th actually thought I was getting like into a little cutscene at first, and then then it ended up being just a stealth kill, <laughs> which you could tell they put like they put a lot of work into it, and some people, you know, some people say that the gameplay gets repetitive throughout, like. And I can understand, like, it is a long game. And the upgrades don't make everything, like, too different. And and the wep the weapons are great, by the way. the I like how they're, uh, there's, like, attention to detail as well. Like, uh, and I had this in the first game as well. Like, when you're, when you're playing as, uh, um... Ellie in both games you don't need to make a shiv to kill a clicker because you have your knife but with a with Abby and with Joel from the first game you have to create a shiv in order to stealth kill a clicker and I I thought that was great how they continued that you know and uh, the uh, the stealth kills I think are slightly better like Ellie, uh, you know, she stabs them in the neck and then pulls it out, sprays a little blood on the floor. And then Abby, like, like obviously she chokes you and breaks your neck. But it's cool because it, it's, it looks like she's, like, pulling your neck out of, the, out of the socket, which is brutal but sick. I thought it was dope. And... The, uh, I suggest the, uh, I suggest playing on the hardest difficulty, because not only is it more difficult and, you know, a more realistic, uh, experience, but it's also more fun, and I think that the game definitely, you know, deserves a lot of praise for it. It's arguably the best looking game ever. And it could be debated that it's also the best, you know, gameplay in a game, depending on your preference. Like, if you're into realistic combat and shooting, then this game's definitely for you. Like, if that's your niche, you know. But it's all, you know, very, uh, it's all about your preference and everything. Uh, I think, um, what's it called? The, uh, the story about Last of Us, it's, uh, it's a lot it's a lot to talk about and it's uh it's pretty much the only reason this game 
Last of Us 2 gets a lot of hate because of the story and, you know, the char- some of the characters. Personally, I don't fully, I don't, I mean, I understand parts, but to say the whole thing is bad, like, I don't, I don't get that. Uh, what's up, Jimmy? <laughs> I was just talking about Last of Us. Okay, he left. <laughs> uh, so yeah, with the story, I can understand why you would not like it. In my opinion, there are some parts that I would slightly change, you know. Like when it goes from Ellie's... uh. Like, when you finish Ellie's day one to three in Seattle section, and then it switches from Abby, or to Abby, then, you know, by then it kind of threw me off at first. I mean, it's like, on one hand, I like it, and I don't, or not as much, because I don't, I think... Where it could have done better, I mean, it, like, towards the end of Ellie's part, towards the middle, like, you have all this build-up, and it shows, you know, you know, it shows Abby killed Jesse, and she has Ellie and Tommy to gun, at gunpoint, and she's about to do something, and then all of a sudden it switches Oh yeah, by the way, that's a spoiler. I guess spoilers throughout this uh, thing. Uh, The whole uh, switch from Ellie to Abby or that, that, you know, that second time in the middle, it was, uh, it was jarring at first, you know. It was, you know, it threw me off. I mean, I didn't really think it was going to end, which I ended up being right, but I definitely didn't expect that. I th- It was a good twist, I'll give him that. And I thought that on one hand, it's like, you know, the Ellie's part, it builds you up like, oh yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready to kill this bitch, and you know. Like, you know, she's, you bit all that build up and then all of a sudden it goes down to the bottom and then throughout Abby's playthrough, you're, you know, building up to that same spot and it's like, wow, <laughs> what do I do? It's like, you don't know how to feel, you know, and Obviously, it's different. It's different for everyone. Like, not everyone is going to fall for, you know, not everyone's going to feel the same way. Some people will change their mind about Abby. Some people don't care. But, you know, some people understand and, you know, it's it's weird. But I like, I like that, you know, because... Obviously, people, you know, they say they don't like this game, but they clearly care a lot about what happens. I mean, I mean, that's, that's normal, but, but it really shows in this, in that part, especially in this whole game, but there, like, it was like, wow, (laughs) like people are super invested and for good reason. Uh, I thought it was weird at first, like, how they made us play as Abby instead of Ellie. When, the fir- or the first time, they made us play as Abby. Because, you know, obviously we were still on Abby Seattle Day 3. And I just thought that was, like, a little weird... I mean, it was, it was some, there was some very cool 
action, like the part where Ellie, like you know, her arm gets broken, and it's hard to watch at times because it's like you really don't want any of them, or I didn't, I didn't want any of them to die, especially yet Ellie. But the uh, I was like, holy shit. Is this like the end or? Because then after that whole confrontation. It. um, You know, then it. It slows down a little more. And then it shows Ellie and Dina. And Jesse Jr. In that little house on the hill. And it's, you know. And it's not quite the end of the game yet. And. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, in my opinion, I thought I was like, I mean, at first I didn't know how to feel. Like, I was still trying to figure out what the game was going to do or where it was going or how it was going to end. Because, like, you know, Abby was gone at this point, Abby pretty much won. And Ellie was, you know, given up. Oh, by, by the way, a little side note. I thought... Like, yes, the pacing, in my opinion, is a little bit worse than the first game. Even though I overall like the second one more. Like, I thought Abby's part kind of threw it off. But then it picked up towards, like, you know, towards the end-ish. It, like, it, it, it definitely picked up more. Like, but yeah, that's a little side note. Uh, but then when it, was, when it was picking back up, you know, it sort of, uh, with this whole situation with Ellie and Dina in the house, it sort of went, you know, it went down again. And then, uh, you know, later on, she was having PTSD with Joel. And deep down, like, she was trying to move on, but she, she couldn't. And eventually Tommy showed up for, you know, kind of as a, a reminder. And, you know, with the... A broken leg, because of because he got shot in the leg, and and then he got his eye shot. Like, by the way, I thought I actually thought Tommy died because towards the the end of Abby's day three, like she shoots Tommy in the eye, and he I thought he died for a second, but and then it showed that part, and I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> Tommy, you know, he'd be like the new, uh, he'd be like the new Kenny from, uh, you guys remember from Walking Dead where we all thought he was dead and he ends up, you know, looking all badass and with like long hair and a beard and one eye and he ends up being the main character, Joel's best friend or brother in this case. He's like, yeah, he's very similar to Tommy in that, or Kenny in that way. Uh, but yeah, I'm glad Tommy didn't die because, you know, they killed Joel at the beginning, which was super upset, upsetting, and I couldn't accept it at first, but, you know, eventually I, I was, you know, I understood why they did it and in a way, I'm glad they did it because it ended up for a really good story and really good character development with Ellie and everything. Like, I thought that was great. Despite how much I didn't want it to happen. Uh, and then they, you know, they killed Jesse, which was... You know, I liked Jesse. Like, he was... I thought he was super cool. 
He reminded me of Markiplier a little bit. <laughs> like he's a he's this Asian guy, but he has an American accent and long black hair. Like he, but yeah, he was he was cool. It's a shame they killed him. And uh, what else? But yeah, anyway, with the with the ending. Eventually, uh, what's it called? Ellie went back to, or she went to, uh, it was California or Sacramento, wherever it was. And that's, which is where Abby was going. Like, she was trying to look for a 2425 Constance, which, uh, I thought that. When they put me back as Abby for that, that one last time, I thought it was like super weird. I thought we were done with Abby. But then they made us keep playing. And, you know, it was super weird at first, but And then they got jumped by those uh those peep the that that new group. The the rattlers, which I thought were super interesting. I wish they'd done a little more with them. And I mean they probably won't cuz Ellie broke in and killed a lot of them and she set those prisoners free which and then they set the the place on fire. <coughs> Excuse me. And they probably killed some more of them. Like who knows, they're probably all dead, but I hope they do something else with them. Because, you know, they were, they were, you know, I did like the wolves and the, the, what were they called? The Seraphites. I thought they were cool too, but they weren't as interesting or unique really. But, you know, I definitely enjoyed the, all the main characters. Except for maybe Isaac. I thought they, I thought he was a very... I mean, he had potential. He was played by a good voice actor, and he was just very underdeveloped. I mean, I don't know. He was only in two scenes, and he was, I think he, like, he was shown in two scenes, and his voice was somewhere else, like over a walkie-talkie or something. But any anyway, yeah. Towards the end, where Ellie breaks in and she finds Abby, and they're both like super bruised and beaten up and just miserable. And you know, Abby lost all of her most of her muscle. Thankfully, Lev was still alive because I didn't want Lev to die. It was because of Lev that Dina was still alive and that, you know, to keep Abby from losing it, kind of like Ellie did sort towards the end. Uh, I thought that the, uh, when they finally confronted each other, like, I was like, wow, this, they're right, they're right there. <laughs> Like, she has this chance, but, you know, what is, what's going to happen? Uh, and then she cut her down. I was like, okay. <laughs> and they were sort of just standing there. It was, it was very awkward, and but intentionally. And they were just walking to the boats, which you could see on the title screen, which I thought was cool. Um, by the way, the title screen, when you beat the game, it changes and it shows you in this, you by this beach with this weird, like, big cat, uh, not castle, like a round building with flags on it. Then, and it was like daytime instead of, you know, foggy gray clouds. But 
yeah, anyway, the... And then there was, you know... Ellie could have let her go in peace, but she just had to get one last, like, fight in there. She had to, you know, get... She had to, you know, try and just finish it. And I thought the fight scene at the end was... I thought it was good. I mean, it was hard to watch. Like, it was very... By this point in the game, I was like... You know, I was feeling like, all right, I mean, this, this is still going on. Like, I've, I've forgiven Abby. Like, Ellie needs to forgive her. Some people don't feel that way and were hoping that she would die, but which I understand. But, you know, it was just, it just didn't feel right. Like, if you killed her before or like when she killed Joel and I think that would have made a lot more you know sense or when she killed Jesse and was about to kill Dina and everything that would also have made a lot of sense but here you know like she was weak like both of them were super weak and the the fight team was super you know it was like a bit dragged out not in a bad way, like, and it was intentional, like, they were both super beat up, Ellie got stabbed by a, a tree earlier, and I was bleeding out for, like, almost the whole ending and everything, and it was, it was very brutal, like, <laughs> like, Abby gets cut a bunch of times, uh, they get punched in the face, and bunch of times and you know Abby gets stabbed in like the chest somewhere almost dying and Ellie gets two of her fingers bit off it was her her right ring finger and pinky and yeah it was, it was just crazy and I'm pretty sure Ellie may have lost her knife because it fell in the water because they were right, they were fighting right by the water, which I don't know if she lost her knife. I hope she didn't, but, you know, she may have lost it. And then, what else is there? Uh, I thought that, um, what's it called? I'm kind of, I'm glad that Abby didn't die because doing you know I yes yeah, she killed Joel and she killed Jesse but you know she did it for a good reason like Joel killed her father and the father was her the the father of Abby was that doctor at the end of the first game who was you know doing surgery on Ellie which, you know, they were trying to find a cure for this whole, you know, that whole virus and everything. And so, you know, of course she would be enraged. Not only should, did, did Joel kill her father, he also put the whole human race at risk. You know, so... And Joel, like, arguably... Like, Joel's not, like, the best person, especially in the first game. Like, he was a very, like, for who knows how many years he was living in that, that dump of an outpost or whatever. Doing, like, you know, deals and stuff and working behind the back of, you know, the authority there and everything. Like, he wasn't the best, car the best person. He was kind of an asshole at times and then towards the second game he gets you know softer and you know he becomes more of a father figure than he was in the first game arguably and you know I just the reason we love Joel so much is because of his character development and his believability 
like I could picture this happening to a real person. That's why that's why I love Joel so much cuz not because he's the best person because he's amazing. He's an amazing character, an amazing written character in a video game. Uh I think that but yeah, he in a way like as much as I didn't want to see it, like he kind of had it coming from what he did. You know, despite how much I love Joel and everything, like what he did wasn't okay. <laughs> it was very badass in the moment, but as I look back, like it is like that was a mistake. You know, despite his intentions. And with, uh, but yeah, at the end, eventually Ellie saw, like, visions of, uh, Joel and everything, and, you know, she, uh, she just let uh, Abby live, and well, go with, let her go with Lev, and they both went on their ways to who knows where, and, uh, Eventually, when Ellie went back to the house, Dina was gone with with uh, Jesse Jr. because Dina didn't want her to go, and because she was tired of seeing Ellie leave and come back all, you know, you know, messed up and everything, and seeing her become more and more of a, you know. Of a, I guess, a, a worse person. I guess, a bad person, you know? Uh, so, um, I like, I did like the, uh, some people hate the ending the most out of the whole game. Which, again, I understand. Because, you know, I mean, it was a bit anticlimactic. Not the fight scene, like, like the, uh, like she just left her guitar there and it showed her walk off through the windowsill. Like, yeah, it's a little anticlimactic, but there were things I really liked about the ending. Like, um, what's it called? The, I liked the fight scene with her and Abby. I liked how realistic and brutal it was and how it made me feel as a person and the insight it gave me. And I liked the, uh, I liked the, when it showed the window sill with the, the guts, when she put her guitar down, I liked the, uh, I like how it looked a lot like the uh, the title screen from the first game. Like it shows the window with the uh, with the breeze blowing in and the uh, curtains thing. Like it looked a lot like that. If you if you look at the title screen and then you look at that window, that specific window, it looks very similar to me. And I like I like I don't know if that was intentional, but it looked really. It was very cool. And then, uh, what else was there? Uh, I'm glad they didn't kill Abby. Uh, I like the little, the, the last little cutscene with Joel and, uh, and Ellie. Like, this whole time we thought they ended off, this whole, like, 24, 25 hour game, <laughs> we, we thought, Joel and Ellie's relationship was pretty much ruined, and they ended off on a on a bad note. And you know, towards the beginning, Ellie was like, "I'm gonna invite Joel over to watch a movie." The you know, whatever whatever it was called. Uh, it's like she was trying to get better, 
and they made it look like, oh, the, you know, they, uh, they ended off on a bad note before Ellie could really, you know, say anything to him and, you know, it made us, it made us feel bad because, you know, that was this game and in, game's intention pulling on our heartstrings like that, making us feel super emotional, which they did very well. <laughs> I didn't, me personally, I didn't cry or anything. Not that it matters, there's nothing wrong with that, but I guess I'm just like used to sad stuff happening both in games and in real life and all that. But it was sad. That game is very, very sad. Um, I'm fine with... And I liked, I liked how it was, uh, you know... Shit. My phone's, uh... Young. I liked how it was, you know, very... I'm fine with games having you know, a sad ending, or a, you know, bad ending. Not bad as in, like, oh, was, this this game sucks, this ending sucks. No, it was, I meant bad as in, like, bad as in, you know, like, oh, the bad, the good guys, you know, kind of lose in this, in a way. Like, Ellie had the chance to stop before, but she had to go after Abby again, you know? Like, she didn't realize what she had until she lost it. Like, she still, despite losing Joel, she still could have, you know, she still could have lived a good life and all that, despite losing Jesse and everything, like, she still had a you know, Dina and Jace and Jesse Jr. Excuse me. Uh, despite all of that, she kept going after her. And, you know, it made her feel like she was doing a good thing. But at the end of the day, she was, she was hurting herself more than anyone. Or, in a way. But, towards the end... Like, Ellie made the right decision, in a way. Letting Abby live, letting her anger go, and... You know, letting bygones be bygones, but... By that point, it was just... It was too late. And I think that was... One of the main messages of this... That game. Last of Us 2. Is... You know, to know what you have... Before you lose it. Because... When, uh, when she, uh, like, at, towards the end of the game, like, she made the right decision, in my opinion. But she just did it when it was too late. And there was another great message about the game. Like, uh, the, uh, this whole time... Like, here and there, you're put in the perspective of Ellie and Abby, and you get to see their interactions with uh, with her friends and everything, and, you know, and it's, it's different. And also, a little side note, I thought that both the gameplay for Abby and Ellie, I, I liked how kind of different it was, like, with... Uh, with Ellie, I feel like they were definitely trying to cater her more to stealth gameplay. Like, I, I like that. And even the weapons they were giving her, like, like she got a, a sniper rifle, a bow and arrow, uh, some other stuff. But with Abby, when you played as her, like, you were trying to, you know... Like, I feel like they were, they were trying to cater her more to action. Like, right as you open, like, right as you start playing, like in day one of Seattle for Abby, like, she's in a car chase scene and she has a semi-automatic rifle shooting people off horses. 
And then in Seattle Day 2, she's fighting the, people call it the Rat King, which is that super bloated zombie, which I thought was super cool. I thought it was the best uh, boss fight, pretty much, in the entire, uh, you know, game or franchise. I thought that was awesome. Uh, what's it called? And then in, in Seattle Day 3, towards the end, Abby is uh, escaping from that burning island with the, you know, haven. And it was, it was super dope. And then right after that, it goes back to the part where her and Ellie finally encounter each other. And I thought that was like, I was like, wow, yeah. <laughs> I could definitely see what they were doing with this game. But what I was, but with the uh, perspective, like when it shows all the friends, not only is it different gameplay wise, but it's different as an experience with uh with the characters and everything and how you know it's different with all the the characters and their point of view and everything like it it's uh it's giving you a choice basically to i mean obviously the game doesn't it's not a choose your own adventure but with a story it's like when you're watching a movie, you know, like it's going to end somehow and you don't have to like it or not, but it's all up to you and what you want to think. Like with that game, it gives you the choice to root for Al for Abby or Ellie. And I really like that. It's saying basically no one's actually a good person or bad person. It's all based on the perspective of other people. If some if the majority of people think you're a bad person, then you're most likely gonna feel like a bad person or you know, or gonna be known as a bad person. But if everyone thinks you're a good person then, you know, etc. And I, I really liked that. I thought it was super like innovative and everything uh i think that but yeah that in my opinion i just i also i really liked how the game was uh it was different from the first game in quite a few ways like the gameplay is slightly different it doesn't change up that much but in terms of narrative and direction and you know like the first game you're escorting Ellie all the way to uh Salt Lake City to you know hopefully find a cure and everything and you know that's what the majority of the game is and you meet people here and there new groups and stuff and developing as a father figure for Ellie. But in this game, it's like, you know, it's quite different. Like, it's a, it starts off as like, you know, a revenge tale. And then it ends up being like a, a tale. Of, when it goes to Abby, it's pretty much like you're on a tale of, uh, finding uh peace or whatever or trying to trying to live with the things you've done and it goes kind of back and forth at times but i you know i just i like the conflicting the conflictingness of it like it made me it was made it made me you know struggle on what to feel about the characters in a good way of course you know uh, 
I thought, you know, I'm glad they didn't make it too similar to the first game. Like, the graphics are way better. The gameplay, in my opinion, shits on the first game. You know, compared to it, obviously. The first game's gameplay is still really good. Uh, you know, I thought that... I thought it was, like, super, uh, you know... I just... I'm glad it made changes, because... I think that's what makes it stand out from the first game. And, you know, obviously, it, I mean, it doesn't feel like its own thing, kind of like with the two Outlast games, like Outlast 1 and 2 are very different from each other. They feel like their own game. With this one, it feels like its own game, sort of. Or, but or, or it feels like more unique to the first game. But it at the same time, it still does a great job of letting people know and, you know, continuing the the progression of the the character development and the world building and the conflicts between the characters. Like you know obviously Obviously, just because you finish a video game and you go to the next, the sequel, that doesn't mean everything from the first game is going to go away. And I'm glad that they, you know, kept up with the, the ending of the first game. Like, obviously, what Joel did, there's going to be a lot of consequences. And there's going to be a lot of epic, you know, crazy shit happening. And they really held up that bargain. Like, it was a huge risk. And I thought I thought they did a great job, you know, continuing that story. While also setting up for some newer stories. And, you know, character development and whatever. I'm glad, you know... The only, I guess, the only things I didn't enjoy as much was, like I said before, the pacing. You know, in the first one, it's slightly better because there wasn't as much happening in this, in the second one. But, you know, that's sort of a given, I guess. It was mainly because of Abby, Abby's part when it just started, day one, Seattle. But, um, with, uh, I thought the, um, and some of the side characters, like, I really liked, some of them are better than some of the ones in the first game, and then some of them are, you know, not as good, like, I thought Isaac was kind of a wasted villain, I thought they could have done more with him. Like, he had the potential to be cool, but he was just super underdeveloped. And, uh, I think the wolves and the seraphites were cool. But, you know, they also, I guess they could have done a little more with him, despite, you know, I still liked them. But the rattlers, I thought, were very interesting, and I wish they did more with them than, you know, the wolves and the seraphites. You know, uh, other than that, I mean, there's still some other things like once in a while you'll, you may find a, you know, a bug or whatever, like, which is understandable. It's a huge, it's a huge game with a huge, uh, arguably the best looking game ever with huge maps and everything. And, you know, huge pieces of land. Which is, you know, I think is understandable. And, by the way, with huge pieces of land, like, towards the beginning of Ellie's, uh, the Edel Say one, Day One, the, uh, I really like that little kind of open world section. 
in the in the game where Ellie's trying to find the uh the fuel for the gate to go to you know keep you know going to find Abby and everything or they were trying to find Leah in the radio station but to do that they first had to you know they had to go to you know find fuel to get past this gate and to find it that they had to look throughout this huge uh, map and you know they even had a clever way of giving you a map in it too it wasn't just like oh click this button and you'll see a map no they they give you a map for that specific spot which will then become you know useless throughout the rest of the game i thought to me i thought that was very smart and i wish they had more of that i will say i wish they could have done more sections like that but you know despite not despite that like at least they they kept throwing new stuff at you like they uh they introduced the 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 this new enemy called the shamblers they were like uh running they were like uh suicide bombers but they never stop like you know exploding and they don't they don't explode like you know like an actual explosion they uh like acid flies out of them you know like uh like from the spores and everything like it it shoots out of them and it burns your skin and everything they weren't like that was the only way they could attack you as well like they didn't hit you or anything they just explode next to you which you know i thought that was cool and new and you and i liked how you couldn't like you know sneak up on them and stealth kill them that would have been you know too easy but yeah, that was that was very cool. And I said before I liked the uh I liked that uh whole the whole section with the uh what's it called? That rat king when they were in the, the building in the the hospital that the wolves were searching and Abby went to look for a first aid kit in the lower floors. That was like Hasn't been searched for who knows how long since the the whole thing started and that huge amalgamation of people and bodies just piled together and uh, I thought that that boss fight was super cool and uh, I like how it you know I like how it went apart and became two enemies like there was that big glob of thing and then there was that smaller one which is like the stalkers just more armored and uh when you kill the big thing that little that little boss shows you like like it shows you the way out but unintentionally and then you find it, and then you have to, you know, you can kill that if you want. And it's sort of like a, a little uh, a little mini boss, which I thought was cool. Um, I, th I, um, yeah, a lot of the scenery was, or pretty much all the scenery in this game, like it was just fantastic. They, they totally like outdid themselves. The voice acting was great, like very realistic and like uh, the the woman who played um, Abby, I forget her name, Laura something or whatever, whatever her name is. Like, I think she definitely deserved that that um, game award, the best voice actress or actor or whatever. Like, they definitely deserved that. Uh, you know, despite how good the others were as well. Um, what's it called? I thought 
for the Game of Year awards, I thought it was unfair how they gave two spots for Last of Us instead of one for each, but whatever. Made it more unfair. Um, what's it called? I, uh, I really liked the, I, yeah, I've spoken a lot about this game. And I hope I could, uh, record me and some of my friends, you know, talking about it. I know a lot of my friends hate this, hate the game, <laughs> which is, I understand, of course, but, you know, I'll, uh, I hope to talk to them about it. And maybe I will start a podcast in the future. <laughs> Cause I, you know, but yeah, anyway, I've, uh, I've spoken a lot already. So I, uh, yeah, I'll talk more about the game and I'll talk about it with my friends, hopefully. And that way we can get, you know, you don't just have my opinion. That way I'm not just voicing what I think about it. Because that way I want I want people to, you know, really uh, have more insight on the game than just one side of the, uh, you know, one opinion. I'm just one guy. Like, one opinion isn't enough, I, I believe. Like, if you really want to get a game... And you want to know a little bit about it or what it's like. I would definitely ask around for a bunch of people. I wouldn't just ask one person. You know. So yeah. Hopefully I can get someone on a live. And you know. We'll, uh, we'll see when that happens. Uh, Alright. Uh, bye. See you until next time.